Hello, and welcome to Coffee with Lyman. Well, you can see I'm out here in the wilds, right? So I thought I'd take a walk, go out to a little uh, woodsy kind of area near where I live, and have a little chat with you. Now, what I'd like to talk about today is kind of a funny story about my dad. Now, my dad and I, we didn't have the best relationship. I was always under the impression he really didn't like me that much. I'm not sure why, but he didn't. So anyway, uh, there was a fair amount of verbal abuse, very little, if any, physical. So yeah, I, I'd say, uh, yeah, we just didn't hit it off. But we did have our nice times together too. So this story is about where I lived as a kid. I grew up in a mobile home park. A lot of people call them trailer parks or manufactured home parks, whatever you want. Anything over 29 feet long is a mobile home. Less than that, it's a travel trailer or a trailer. Anyway, we lived in a mobile home, in a big mobile home park on the east side of St. Paul, Minnesota. Its name still is there, Landfall Village. But at that time, it was privately owned by the Olson family. And uh, in later years, it became uh, part of the county uh, municipality. So, <clears throat> excuse me, to get on with my story here. In our mobile home, we had uh, gas heat. And the gas heat was piped in due to the courtesy of the mobile home park. So there was a little meter outside of our home and however much gas we paid or we used, it was monitored there. Well, uh, my mom, she was like, when it came to, to, to pick up odors, a scent, she was like a bloodhound. She, I can't imagine anyone having a better sense of smell than my mother. So anyway, she detected the smell of propane gas and in our home. So anyways, she gets my dad, go check that out. Well, what my dad did was uh, under a mobile home all the way around from the bottom of the outside of the mobile home to the ground, there's a skirting. So it makes it so the wind can't blow through, animals can't get in under your home. It looks nicer, keeps the place a little warmer in the winter, that sort of thing. Well, that's where your uh, gas uh, line would run underground to hook up to the furnace somewhere in the home. Well, he gets the idea that he's going to remove a little door on her skirting. He is going to take a lighter and get on his hands and knees, because that's all the room there is under a mobile home, and crawl inside that little door next to the gas meter and look for the gas leak. So I guess in his mind, what he was thinking was, if there's a gas leak, and you have a match lit that, or a cigarette lighter, is going to, uh, you know, burn wherever that gas is. It'll make a little flame. Well, what he didn't realize was that under our mobile home, being that it was enclosed, there was a whole lot of contained free propane in the air there. So when he got under there, he, he, he got under far enough that his whole body was inside before he lit the match. My mother and I were standing outside, just kind of standing there looking at the event. And when he lit that match, we saw, all we saw was a big, we heard this, oh, boof, and saw this big burst of flames shoot out from that hole and quickly followed by my dad's butt coming out backwards as fast as he could crawl. <laughs> his eyes were were about as big as saucers. And he took his cap off and he was beating himself. He thought he was on fire. And what he did was he singed off his eyebrows. Well, as soon as the woof woof went and he started backing out, I started laughing. It just struck me like I was watching a Laurel and Hardy show. And it never even occurred to me he might be hurt. 
and my mom was standing there and she's looking at me and she's saying, don't laugh, don't laugh, trying to be quiet about it so my dad wouldn't get mad. Well, anyways, he gets out and he's beating on himself and all that. And my mom, while his back is towards us because he's on his knees, she takes me around the corner of the hall and says, stop laughing, stop laughing. If you can't stop laughing, go away. You'll make him mad. So I was like hysterically laughing. I thought it was so funny. So I went away. And that was just one of the things that was like, it was really mean of me to laugh. And I don't know why that struck me as so funny. I think it's because he was kind of a jerk. And then something like that happened. Another time, the poor guy in the middle of winter, he decides to crawl up on an addition we had built to our mobile home. It was 10 by 20 feet, and there was an eave built out over the exterior wall, right? So rain wouldn't run straight down, it'd run off, you know, like on a house. Well, anyway, on the eave, uh, ice had built up, and my parents were afraid that that was gonna cause the roof to start leaking. So his idea was he'd go outside, put a ladder up under the eave, climb up the ladder and bang, 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 knock down that ice, break it off, let it fall down and everything from the roof could drain okay. Well, what he did was, and I don't know why, but again, I was just standing there watching him. I was like 12 years old when all this was going on. And he was, uh, he took his ladder, he set it on the ground beneath the eave, far enough away from the wall so he could, you know, get up over to Eve, pound a little bit. But he set it on ice. There was a, just a shiny, big glare patch of ice all along that wall outside because of, you know, it would uh, get a little warm, drip down, freeze, get a little warm, drip down, freeze. So instead of like, you know, taking something and knocking a hole some notches into the ice or just clearing the ice away he just set his the legs of the ladder on the ice climbs up the ladder starts messing around with the ice and surprise surprise the ladder goes like this and he ah, falls down hits the ground on his back and uh i didn't laugh out loud i i you know went up to him and uh Helped him get up, and I thought maybe he really was hurt that time. So, but just eh, goofy things like that. Well, I just wanted to take a few minutes to say hello to you again, share a little coffee with you, and tell you a short story. So, thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you again the next time. Goodbye for now.